that a business would persist until the formation of the National Wrestling Alliance in 1948. WA as a central governing body, with its singular, undisputed world champion, would be absolute, and undeniable. This control, combined with the expansion of the interstate highway system, and the inevitable popularity and availability of regional television, would usher in an era of wrestling that was defined by what would come to be known as the territory system. The territory system would dominate wrestling for nearly four decades while the borders, authority, popularity, and obedience of individual NWA territories was in a near constant state of flux, to this day the impact and influence of these territories is still felt. Each territory had its own signature promoter and star. While it is impossible to cram these characteristics into a static, concrete map, we are damn sure going to try anyway. So open up your eyes. It's too late Now one man There's no way you can Hit the street lights running Don't give a damn A civil explanation That she'll never find Sinners never sacrifice We never leave them alone Is hate really worth the price? Care for compromise, always threaten with someone's life, and it feels like the end of the world. All right, welcome to another episode of This Week in Pro Wrestling with Mike Monty, going solo from studio, but joining me is Bruce from ESO Creative. Bruce, welcome uh, to the show. Welcome to becoming a new co-host of Monty Nefaro. Joining between me, Jimmy, yourself, and uh, Miss Petro, we look like we're going to be able to advance and do some more and special things. But first, Bruce, I know people know you out there. But I think it's, I think it's important you kind of share with everybody really who you are. And, you know, why you even got involved in this whole wrestling gig. But again, welcome aboard, Bruce. I'm not hearing Your sound's not working, Bruce. Can't make it up this quick. <laughs> Jesus. Is that Christ better? Is that almighty. Better? Hey. Right off the start. Ooh. Hey. We got we, we to gotta have fun right off the bat. But, hey, Mike, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going, everybody out there? It's a, it's been quite a journey to get here. It's a, it's a year ago today. I, uh, I, I met you in person. <laughs> I can't believe it. But uh, uh, this is ESO. Well, my name is Bruce. Everybody out there knows me as ESO. Uh, longtime wrestling fan. You know, grew up in the golden age of wrestling. That really hot era: Hulk Hogan, uh, Randy Savage. You know, the WrestleMania one through three. Uh, grew up in a great area of New York, the Hudson Valley. And right across the river from me was the Poughkeepsie Civic Center. So I got to see some great, great TV tapings over the year, over the years. I mean, I've seen Andre the Giant get his head haircut. Oh, I saw uh, Hulk Hogan and Paul Orndorff when Paul Orndorff turned on Hogan. Some of the great setup angles for for the WrestleManias. Uh, but yeah, what a what a great area to grow up in. And uh, you know, from there I became a longtime wrestling fan. Uh, Ever since then, uh, but and I've been a member of the M&P community, the Monty and the Farrow community, for a few years now. I found you guys while watching D Dan Marotti and Marty Janetti, the party with Marty, the Tony Atlas stuff. And during the feud with Tony Atlas, I got turned on to you guys and started watching you guys. And all these years later, I uh, <laughs> now I'm sitting here co-hosting with you. Well, you know what? And I'm glad to have you aboard. You know. You, you mentioned you got to see the Orndorf Hogan thing. Um, why don't you tell everybody? I remember you telling me a while back, like what happened there. Can you fill up? You yeah. know, could you fill yourself, fill us in with that? 
Absolutely, absolutely. It's actually one of the the key moments in my wrestling fandom. It's probably one of the reasons um, I was I'm a wrestling fan today. I felt like I was let into something. It was so cool watching the uh, the entire. The entire feud took place in one night that led up to that Saturday night's main event where Paul Warndorf and Hulk Hogan simultaneously uh, dropped off of the cage and they had to restart it. It was, it was one of the great, the big angles of, of that year. Uh, what ended up happening was they were filming the uh, flower shop for for that night or for, for that angle. If anybody doesn't know what the flower shop was, uh, it was Adrian Adonis' version of Piper's Pit. Uh, yeah, it's, it was a, a silly little show there, but what ended up happening was during that night, uh, they ended up filming the same episode of the flower shop. Something must've gone wrong in production, but they, they filmed something off. I'm a little eight, nine year old kid. And now all of a sudden I felt like I was led into the biggest secret out there that wrestling wasn't real. It was, it was scripted. Um, at that point, my I ended up getting to know uh, one of my grandfather and grandmother's neighbors in Florida. Uh, his name was Bulldog Mathers. I haven't been able to find out much more about him, but he had been a professional wrestler. And the one thing he had, he made sure he told me right away was it's, it's scripted. It's not fake. So that was uh, one, of, one of those funny, funny stories out there. I, you know, I always wondered what it was like at that civic center. Did you go there all the time or... Whenever we could get tickets, we, we went there. You have to realize the Civic Center only sat about 2,500 people, maybe 3,000 at that point. So it wasn't always easy getting tickets. But, yeah, I really – I probably went to, oh, 10 to 15 shows there over the course of six or seven years. What ended up happening is after – let's see. It was like right around – just before – just before WrestleMania three is when they stopped taping there. Wrestling was just getting too too big. That's when you started to see wrestling superstars and wrestling challenge come out. The WWF, uh, those big WWF shows, and they were in more of an arena base versus a, a small civic center base. So that's a. So I would say between 1983 and 1987, yeah, probably, oh yeah, probably 12 to 15 shows there, and, and most of them were TV tapings. That's very cool. So, this is our first show together. I'm really excited. A little bit different. Uh, used to having people in studios, so I kind of got to get used to this internet, in, this internet thing. Um, everybody knows Jimmy's on his way to Florida now, and then he's got to set up. But uh, hopefully this is a permanent deal with the four of us uh, trying to work this out. But anyway, Bruce, WWE SmackDown leaving Fox for USA next year. As Raw hits the markets, what are you thinking about that? The loss of Fox, do you think that's going to affect SmackDown? And what do you think about them possibly? Yeah. Well, they're going to USA Network. That's that, that, to me, could be an issue. Well, in this day and age, media is changing left and right. Let's face it, network TV is not what it used to be. NBC... I think they're making the mistake on this. WWE is growing, and especially with now the Endeavor brand, there's such a and that TKO, they're, they're such more powerful, such a more powerful organization, especially in a negotiation standpoint. Um, I'm actually looking forward to going back to the times where we've got and uh, WWE on NBC. I, I'm thinking back to the Saturday night's main event and the main events that uh, of the past, and we're going to see four of them. It looks like. What do you think the future of Raw is going to be? Hmm. I, I I I haven't really thought of that. It's sitting it's sitting where it's sitting on USA now. So, you know, what are they going to do? They won't. I don't think they're going to move it anywhere. Um, so, do, so just, you're just uh, going to have a one stop shop USA Network? Well, no, no, you don't have a one stop shop because you you can't look at it as a linear television and cable. Now you have to look at it in the bigger, broader picture. You have you know, uh, Twitter or uh, yeah, X, whatever it is now. You you have that out media outlet. You have Facebook. You have uh, Instagram. You have Snapchats. You have TikToks. You have uh, Netflixes. You have the Intuitive app. You have so many other outlets that you can distribute media on. No, I I really don't think it's going to affect the the WWE negatively in in any respect. 
Well, Jason anything, Keller seems to think it's a downgrade leaving Fox. Now, you got to think about this, Bruce, right? Not everybody has cable where they get USA Network, where Fox is on regular network television. Um, you know, I I'll, tend to think that could be I'll, a problem. I'll put it this way. My new Spectrum thing that, that I just negotiated, I can choose what networks I want. And it's a it's a great little deal with this app. I mean, I I, I get 25 channels and it's, Oh, uh, I think it's costing me sixty dollars. So I and I get to choose the channels. So I can I can choose Fox. I can choose USA. I can choose whatever whatever I want. The media the media world's changing. So I, I don't think it's a I don't think it never has unintelligent people maneuvering behind them. So I. I you know, we'll no. see what happens. But no, I I don't. I think we're I think we're in a different. We're going into different uncharted territories there's going to be more and more people that are, aren't going to have cable at all everybody's going to be relying on you know your youtubes everything things like that your uh your your uh rumble their your kick all those all those things are growing and growing and growing and that's all taking more and more away from you know that the nbc's the foxes all of those would it be crazy to say that the rocks return last friday everybody's aware um would it be fair to say this was even a bigger pop than Edge's return to the Royal Rumble a few years back? That was, Edge's pop was nothing. <laughs> Compared to that, man, the, the, the rock, that, that house was, it was exploding. If he wouldn't have quite, they would have kept going all night long if he would have let them. It's crazy, especially once he got that, that asshole chant going. Man, that, that dude had... That is probably the most control over a crowd I've seen a WWE performer have in the last five years. And we have, and that's, that's saying a lot because, you know, you have that Seth Rollins, you have Roman Reigns, but man, everybody was popping for The Rock. Is this uh, the WWE's message to Fox saying this is what you're going to miss out? Would that like, would, could it, be a last ditch effort or you think it was already a done deal at this point it, it was it was def i believe it was probably a done deal at that point but that just happened to be an icing on the cake and a, a thumb your nose and you know the, the stars just aligned from him being on the pat mcafee show you know right there in town and you know it was just every the stars aligned on that night and it was the right time for his return I, I don't usually catch SmackDown live. I usually catch it on a rerun. I happen to be watching it live. And once I started to hear him refer to the, the people, I'm like, wait a minute. No, he's not. And me in my own house, I'm popping when that with the rock comes out. That was just a what a what a fun night of TV. Do you think Jay Will saying out there the product's oversaturated now? Do you think wrestling is oversaturated? Well, it, it depends on it, it depends on your taste. Not all the wrestling out there is for my taste, so I don't tend to watch some stuff. So there's just more options out there. The world's the the world's smaller. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of options out there. Saturated, maybe, but you know, let's just, let's just put it this way: it gives people more options and more choice. Mm. What does this mean for Cody Rhodes? Do you think the uh, <laughs> they 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 go off plan now, or you think this is just a one time shot with The Rock? Uh, well, you know that that's that's the that's the million dollar question. I mean, personally, do you think they're really going to give Cody Rhodes that Universal title? No, they're going to give him that Seth Rollins. Uh, I keep calling it the Television title. I'm sorry, it, it, it's not the World Title like. They, you have the so Roman is the champion of the universe, but you know the uh, Seth is the world champion. So it just is kind of weird. I don't know. I don't well, know. I, I want you for some alien to come down and and wrestle uh, Roman for the championship. Say you know uh, you're not the the uh, the greatest you're, wrestler you're, in the universe. You're, down, you're downplaying Seth's title. 
Is that because Gunther has made such a big deal out of the we, – I mean, we've discussed numerous times before the Intercontinental title has really got its prestige back. So is that yeah. why the shine is off of Seth, Seth's title, or is it just that Roman is the world champion and everybody just recognizes it as that? I, I think it's the, the second statement, absolutely. Plus, well, actually, it's kind of a combination of both because, let's face it, Gunther has elevated that title back up to the status, that macho man-level status, that uh, that untouched, you know, it was the second-in-command title. Um, I uh, Seth's title, we just pulled out of thin air. Um, I, hate to, I, I hate to say it, but uh, Ro- nobody's beat Roman, so how can he not be the world champion at the, at the end of the day? But back to the original question then. Every Cody Rhodes is on the road to Roman Reigns finishing his story with this involvement with The Rock. Are the well, as a fan, would you go with The Rock? Oh. Actually, I don't know. Because like let's face it, The Rock stays in the ring are, are numbered. Uh we're not going to see him long range. I do want to see him wrestle Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, but at the same time you know, the, where, what do you do with Cody now then? You know, the, we'd have to find a whole different angle. And again, there's not, there's not many main event level players out there that, of that, that caliber. You know, you know well, Seth Rollins, you could maybe bring up a, you could maybe bring up Drew McIntyre or a Sheamus up to that level. But there's really, I mean, who, who, who is he going to face? Bobby Lashley, Brock Lesnar. There's, yeah, he's already went through Brock. So I don't really, I don't see any other opponent for him other than Roman Reigns. Well, B40 brings up some good points. If they do have Rock versus Roman, it's got to be serious, right? The com- the comedy stuff's got to be kicked out. And I think at some point, you're right. You've got to go with The Rock. You only have a certain window. Um, it, it's kind of funny. I was telling Jimmy last year, I have a friend that works for the WWE, and he told me The Rock was a done deal. And, you know, we all know it turned out The Rock never showed up. You know, he was supposed to show up at the Rumble. He was supposed to finish up at Mania, and Jimmy laughed at me. But it it only turns out to be that it was the case after you find out that it was supposed to be a done deal. So I think you go Rock Reigns and call it crazy, but Punk against Cody. Or Punk against Rollins, maybe, even. You know, Cody just might be the last man out. Yeah, I don't. I just don't know what's what's next for for him if if that doesn't play out like that. All right, um, I'm, Punk. I'm, I'm not sure. The, are we going to bring? I think you really believe they're going to bring Punk in. I mean, I'm going to give you especially the with all that Bruce. baggage. Do I think they'll bring Punk in if it makes sense? Yeah. And you know what? The WWE can control Punk to a certain level. And you know what? I don't think he stays a long time anyway. And, you know, you could just make some really solid statements. But let's just do it this way. I'm giving you the pencil. Knowing what you know now, how does WrestleMania play out? Okay. Let's see. So, you know, they're going to definitely be something. There's something more with the, with, with the bloodline coming through on this. I could almost see... <sighs> It's it's definitely going to be a, a challenge for the blood. You know, Seth, it's going to be Roman Reigns and The Rock competing at WrestleMania, but it's the bloodline on the line. So no so championship. It's going to be the loyalty. I don't think so. How could you put the championship on The Rock? Why do you have to have The Rock He's not going to be there. Why would you have The Rock win anyway? I, I mean, yeah. I, I don't know what to I don't know what to expect. I wouldn't know what to expect with that one. You know, Rock is huge. I mean, that guy's still bigger than he's still bigger than Roman. And he, at fifty years old, that dude it looks like a monster. It's crazy. Um, I couldn't imagine. So hey, here's a funny one. So Hulk Hogan faced The Rock at I believe Hogan was fifty, and The Rock was you know in, in his prime there. Now take a look at The Rock at in The Rock's almost still in his prime 25 20 plus years later it's crazy. Yeah, you know, he looks even, great. Even discussing even discussing putting the title on a 50 plus year old man is is nuts, but The Rock could be it looks like he's 
<laughs> yeah, he could go any day of the week. I think you're in a position now where you can put Roman Reigns with an opportunity to break Hogan's record, right? Which would make him number three all time. You can you can't go any further with that because he's never going to beat Backlund's record, and then finally no. the great Bruno San Martino, right? It would it would just take too much time. But with The Rock getting involved, you could have a main event defending the title for the head of the table and the championship. You put Roman over. Rock bows down to the tribal chief. And we just – why Why does the Cody story have to end at WrestleMania? Well, it would – it, it doesn't. It could also, you know, let's let's face it. Cody's still a, a relatively young. What is he? Thirty seven, thirty eight. Yeah. You know, we we know they want to keep that uh, that title on Roman as long as possible because, you know, especially as they approach that fourteen hundred day mark. Yeah, I mean, it, w- that makes sense to, uh, you know, to is to break Hogan's record. Wow, that would be uh, that would be something. You know, we, that's thirty years, thirty plus years. Puts That's him insane. in the elite. Jason Morning says, L.A. Knight needs a, t- a title. He's more popular than most of the roster. L.A. Knight. What title do you give him? L.A. Knight's the guy to beat Gunther. But you can't just take it off of Gunther now. It has to be stretched out. I think that would be the move to do. Maria Davis says, Cody's younger. His body's still in great shape. and could still fill seats for the WWE. Totally agree. You know, Cody's story doesn't have to end at this WrestleMania. He could just get shunned. I don't think you give him the tight. I don't think you give him Seth Rollins' title. That would be a mistake. I think it would be a huge mistake. Do you somehow get him the Intercontinental title? I mean, you know, I, I don't want to see him fight. I don't. Luther again, no, but... I don't think anything less than the inter the, less than the Universal title is a failure, right? Uh, look. No matter how big a fan you are of Cody Rhodes or anybody else on the roster, every wrestling fan that's watching the show, that's not watching the show, you and me, we want to see Roman against The Rock. It does. It's 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 a done deal. That's what needs to happen. Yeah, you want to see the the head of the. It, it just makes sense. You have two the two biggest superstars. Of the two eras, you have to have them. You have to have them face off. You have to have that passing of the torch moment. Well, we're going to find out, dude. We're going to find out. Listen, today WWE releases finally came came to fruition. Usually happens a couple of days after Mania, but they waited quite a long time. Um, go through a list. Tell me if you think they should have been released. You don't care or big mistake. Aaliyah. Aaliyah, talented girl, didn't she? She just broke the record for pinfall like a year and uh, what a year ago against Natalia at less than four seconds, and I don't think she's wrestled since. Not surprised she was released, but I think it was a waste of a talent. What happened there? What happened? No idea. She disappeared. I, I, I have I have no idea. She was she she got. The world, she had that world record thing, the Guinness Book of World Record thing going with uh, with Natalia, that little feud there, and then poof, it was go- she was gone. She hasn't wrestled in twenty twenty three at all. Maybe injury, I don't know, but I'm I'm shocked. Rick Boogs, little disappointed here. I like Boogs. I, I really think they should have done something more with his guitar angle. Uh, little bit disappointed he he seemed to have the mic skills he seemed to be pretty good in the ring uh very uh poor timing of that injury in that match against the usos and putting him out for that year and uh unfortunately he's never been able to get that get you know get that momentum back behind him not really surprised at the release but again somebody that i think uh they missed the ball on but i don't think he's gonna i don't think the uh his whole story's been written yet I think there's more to come with him. I don't think they dropped the ball with him and missed the ball. Again, another release that doesn't make sense. Aaliyah, I really don't get. Boogs, I really don't get. That guy, had, I think, had everything. Skills, had the look, had that gimmick going. He was a fun character. A bit surprised. Elias. 
Okay, I uh, I know this one. People are going to disagree on me with because Pharaoh disagreed with me last year because he when I sat with him, we we actually discussed the Ezekiel Elias gimmick. I uh, I, I liked Elias. Um, I think the Ezekiel Elias uh, gimmick they dropped the ball with that. However, since he's been back, since he grew the beard and came back, no momentum behind him. He do, he hasn't seemed to be as sharp on the mic when he came back. Uh, not really surprised at this one, but. Again, somebody. I, I think they just dropped the ball. I think he could have been a solid mid carter for the rest of his career. Elias, um, I think he just wore his welcome. I, I liked Elias, but do I miss him? No. Did I miss him? No. So, out of sight, out of mind. Actually, all three people we just mentioned are kind of out of sight, out of mind. But I think that's how the machine works. Madcap Moss. This one I'm a little sub. I, I'm very I'm very surprised at. I, I figured he he's been off of TV a, a lot recently, and I figured he was just getting repackaged. Uh, again, somebody who had, who had some talent, he had a lot of talent. Uh, I don't think you've seen the last of him. He's still a young guy. I think there's a chance that you know he might you know, go back on the indies or go over to another promotion and then end up back in the WWE in the future. His girlfriend Emma. <laughs> Package deal. Um, has Emma, Emma hasn't been on TV in for what years? I don't even remember the last time I've well, seen her. So I don't know years. Did she there. just come back late last year? I think. Oh wait, wait. She won the title with Raj, with uh, Raquel briefly, and then disappeared. Right. I don't. I don't remember that either. But you could be. No, right. no, no. That was the other girl. That was. Uh, that was a lot. Uh, I just remember her coming back and losing all the time, and it was like I didn't even get the whole return. And I think it was because that she was Madcap uh, Moss's girlfriend. But now they're both unemployed at this point. Top Dala. Very surprised at this one. Not going to say he's a great in-ring performer. Dude, you're surprised? You're surprised at this? He's awful. No, I'm not surprised. Awful. Oh, I'm not. I said, well... I'm yeah, I'm surprised in that he was I thought he was really good on that the uh the other shows that he had done and the inner I thought Yeah, he, he was, was really good, good finding everybody's clothes and boots <laughs> and rings. No, but he's also done some talk shows and yeah, interviews. He was good at done. that. Yeah. This one I this Lisa. one was a long time coming. I think he got released, they brought him back, Triple H felt bad, and the guy just doesn't have the goods. That is all. I'm sorry. Shelton Benjamin. Uh, not, not really surprised. He, they, they really haven't done much with him in forever. Uh, I, I enjoyed him when he first came in back in the the uh, early Brock Lesnar days. But you know, the latest run, it was dry. Not surprised in the least. Dolph Ziggler. Uh, I haven't they really didn't they? Really, but I, I'm not. I'm not surprised. He's he's hit and miss. There's he's kind of melancholy. He I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have been surprised if they kept him, and I'm not surprised they got rid of him. He's been around a long time. He's gotten a million dollar contracts. He's done fine, and that's one of the guys. If he's interested, that AEW picks up. More than likely, I think that he's going to go on to com- being a comedian and acting. I think he's done with the wrestling gig. He's made his money. Mason yeah. Monsoor. Oh, I hadn't seen that one. That must have come on, come later. Came on. late over the wire. So he was the the last gimmick he was doing was the the male models thing, right? Both of them, yes. So eh, not not su- not surprised. Um, you know, it, it was such a small part of whatever whichever show it was on. Not not really surprised. He was the he was the mouse of the uh, of that tag team there. So. Dana I definitely Brooke. Do. Dana Brooke. Oh, there's another one. Uh, I again, not surprised. Wouldn't have been surprised if she stayed. Not surprised she's gone. Mustafa Ali. <laughs> Personally, I wasn't a Mustafa Ali fan. However, I am surprised, being that he's isn't he in a, a feud with Rey Mysterio? He's been in NXT for a while, buddy. 
Okay. <laughs> oh, where you been? <laughs> oh no, that was it. So, but no, okay. Obviously, <laughs> not surprising. <laughs> Davio says Dolph surprises me. Let go. I read WD was trying to prevent him from going to other promotions. I think Davio that certain guys they just have to say goodbye. It's been a long time, and you know what? They should go on to he, the WWE should allow them to go to to go to green. Not greener pastures, but different pastures. Again, pastures. Davio, go, uh, Davio, Ziggler going to AEW is not going to move AEW's needle one iota. It's not going to happen. Uh, AEW Grand Slam here in New York. I'm going to go through the matches real quick. Um, tell me what you think. Kingston defeated Cosignoli, uh to win the title. Yeah, what was the, what's the name of those, of those titles? <laughs> Uh, it's a ring of honor, whatever. Yeah, strong, strong, something. Strong, str- First of all, <laughs> I don't know how you put a title uh, anywhere near Kingston. They should just give him a hamburger. And I'm serious, <laughs> by the way. By the way, you had a friend that was at Grand Slam last night. What was the yeah. crowd like? Well, uh, he was in the, the nosebleeds, and he uh, he was a little lonely up there. So he had he meandered his way downward and uh, ended up on the floor. <laughs> So it must not have been as uh, as packed as it looked. Uh, he he managed to to talk his way down there. You know, we're, we're New Yorkers. He uh, they had clo- they had closed down the vending on the upper level because there was nothing going on because there was nobody up there. So he ended up going down down to the bottom level and. It was like, well, listen, they shut it down upstairs. Well, I just want to go over to vending over here. Can I, I just, I'm right over here. Well, they let him in <laughs> out of the bottom floor. He was, uh, <laughs> he, he got into, you know, lower levels without a problem. Found I got to be honest. Was... When when I tuned in, it was so dark. I'm like, they, there must be no crowd there. That's all I thought yeah, that's to what myself. I'm... That's what I, you know, he, if he got down to the bottom level and was able to find seats where nobody was, you know, so <laughs> he got to the, he got to get down to lower levels, so. Jericho pin Guevara. Ray Phoenix well, defeats Moxley to win the title. Uh, Moxley got injured in this one. Thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, I saw that. That pot, well, I, I think I so PWI Insider had you know uh, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and John Moxley, the, the Shield. They had they as the top three wrestlers. Moxley goes and puts the other two don't put their Bodies on the line the way Moxley does. I think Moxley's cutting his career short with all this blood and dangerous stuff that he's doing. Yeah, the guy ended up with a concussion last night, and he tried to call an audible and wanted to get pinned. And then, because the referee didn't realize it, he ended up getting, taking another pile driver. That's great, you know, on top of it. By the way, Lou says Mox got KO'd last night. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Crazy. What do we got here? Soraya defeated Tony Storm. Now I got to tell you something. Tony Storm's new gimmick is so awesome. <laughs> well, Tony Storm that- turned to me. I remember when she got brought up to the main roster and had that mini feud with Flair, and it kind of didn't do well. And that's when she left, and now she went to AEW. I think Tony Storm could do well for herself leaving AEW and trying to go back to the WWE. I think AEW was good for her. It got her a chance to expand her uh, her character and grow her character to a level where she has become very, very entertaining. On the other hand, Soraya Page, who I'm a huge fan of, has this has been a bust. When she first got signed, I was big on it. I was like, this is the greatest move AEW has ever done. I was wrong. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I am not a Soraya fan. Uh, I was a Page fan. I'm not a Soraya, Soraya fan. Uh, but I do have to say that new, that entrance that entrance is pretty cool. The black and white entrance. Yeah, so it's cool. MJF to beat Samoa Joe with a stoppage. I, that, I'm not so sure awesome. I like this. I, I I don't like the way it ended, but the match itself, those two. Yeah, you know, they're they're two of the highlights of, of AEW. They're two of the the reasons if you're going to watch the show, those two, John Moxley. Outside of that, you know, it, it's kind of hit hit or miss. I mean, I hate to say it, last year 
this time, I was praising Jericho and how great he was doing at his age. Unfortunately, I got to say that the match he had at, at, at Grand Slam he kind of showed his age a little bit and uh, maybe maybe it is time for him to to take a step back and slow down a little he, he's um, been showing his age now for the last year and this is no knock yeah that's what on i say him. about no absolutely that's what I say. last year sitting right there in your in your chair you know we were talking about i mean this guy's defying you know defying the odds he was he seemed to be so on and then i you know it's just for for me this was the the time i'm like wow i uh Maybe it's maybe it's time for one of the one of the greatest ever to to take a little bit of a step back. I'm going to agree with you back on the MJF chill match. It was a very good match. I just didn't like the ending. I think it made Joe look weak, and you know, you kind of by by that kind of ending, you kind of just end the feud. Joe can't go anywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you do with him next? Nothing, and that's poor booking, right? Extend some feuds, you know. Let you know, a, Joe win by a run count in. out, you know, or so you know a run in, some type of run in. Start the next feud, get it moving. All right, I need your thoughts on this as we close the show today, guys. Um, Chris Statlander uh, wishes fans would turn tune out rumors and focus on the AEW product. She also on busted open radio said that she's not a fan of fans. Coming up to her at the airport, bothering her on her own personal time. She said she's it's a job and it's not a it's and when she's off she should be off. What are your thoughts about that? Okay, well, listen, there's you, you have to appreciate all fans. They're your fans, whether they're marks, the smart marks, or they're just the fans of the product. If people want to know what's going on behind the scenes, let them let them let them know. That's what's bringing them to the product. Because if they didn't have that, they probably wouldn't be watching. However, I have to agree with her. If people are on their personal time, leave them alone. If you know that you happen to c- catch a conversation with them, you know that maybe you know approach an autograph. But honestly, no. I mean, let the per- if the person's at the airport. Listen, airports are frustrating enough. Having to deal with somebody coming up to you and saying, "Hey, can I have your autograph? Can I have your autograph?" I wouldn't want to deal with it. Benny Scala says the fans pay a salary. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. They pay her salary when she's performing. You know, and when she's at events, when she's traveling and doing other stuff. No, let her be. I'm gonna have to disagree with you on this, man. I think when when you become an athlete, um, a movie star, a professional wrestler, you, you're idolized by millions, right? And you love all the stuff that comes along with it, right? I mean, if you're a wrestler, right, you get a movie role because you were a wrestler, not because you were Chris Stan- Statlander working at McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? So, at what point do you? respect the fans look i understand that people come to the airport and they'll be like hey sign 80 dolls but i mean for someone to say hey can i take a picture with you or you can you just sign this photo as a fan i think you do irreversible damage when you don't treat that fan with respect i think that was very prevalent in days of the past i don't know if you've seen what happens to celebrities whenever they're walking anymore once they're once they're noticed it's like a a a mob of people just start swarming them. It's a uh, there isn't a there isn't a respect thing for that person, their their safety or anything at that point. Um, especially like, I've seen it happen with professional athletes. Uh, I, I was running a, a store and in a popular area, and uh, it, we have, used to get a lot of uh, uh, Knicks athletes in, and somebody came in the store, and they, next thing you know, I mean, people were swarming to to attack, like just to get close to the person. It was at what point? Where where is that line? I mean, there has to be a line that the people have to be able to exist. B forty says, "Have you seen those AEW fans? Can you blame her?" Well, if you're going to put it that way, I'm going to have to agree with them. <laughs> um, R J Hudson says, "I would talk to the nice fans and ignore the mean ones. The fans pay a salary, which pay our bills." I got to th- look, dude, I understand what you're saying, but I think it's uh, if you're going to take that that type of role, you have to deal with what comes along with it. All right, Bruce, we're out of time. You think you want to take another shot at this next week? Uh, it sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Actually, Mike, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be coming down to visit live. 
Oh, that's in right. Studio. You'll be joining us Friday where we go that marathon with uh, Doink the Count, DL, TL Hopper, uh, PN, PN News, News. and yeah, Duke the Dumpster Drossy. So you will be. So you'll I, be here live for This Week in Wrestling. Yeah, yeah, sounds like a plan. And hey, I, I just hope I did some justice for sitting in Pharaoh's seat for the day. You know, M- Jimmy, miss you. I can't wait to w- you know continue working with you. I you know, hope you made it down to Florida safely. All right, guys, uh, Bruce is going to send us out. I want to say join us at 9 o'clock where our second new co-host, Danielle, Daniela Petro, joins the team. It's going to be fun. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm glad I didn't have to follow her. <laughs> yeah, that the, that's uh... right. We'll see you guys at 9. We love you all. All right. And uh, till next week, this, this week in wrestling, and we'll see you later. Bye.